With defined benefit plans or pensions disappearing quickly and 401ks becoming the alternative of choice, a new strategy that addresses the problem of protecting assets from market corrections while creating an income stream that never runs out like a pension has emerged. My guest is Dallas Salisbury. He is president of the Employee Benefit Research Institute in Washington, D.C. Dallas, it's a great pleasure. Thanks for taking the time with us today. Happy to be with you. So you were quoted in, in a New York Times article uh, about a Hartford, Connecticut company, United Technologies, that has incorporated annuities in their 401k plan to offer a guaranteed retirement income stream. And, and I think you, you sort of indicated that a lot of other companies are looking at that as, as a new strategy. Can you, can, you, can you talk about that some? Well, the United Technologies has added an annuity option. And over 7,000 defined contribution plans have now put that type of an option into their defined contribution plan across the country. Now, that's out of uh, over 600,000 plans, so it's, it's a beginning. It certainly is not the end. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, talk about what the benefit, again, is not only to the employee, but also to the employer, because, again, the thorny problem with the 401k is, among other things, is that uh, you know, it, it is up to the employee to figure out how to create the income stream. And again, there is still an element of risk involved. Well, there are two things to note. First is that in the private sector, the majority of defined benefit plans provide an option for single sum distributions in mm -hmm. addition to an annuity. And that from multi-year data that we've looked at, the annuity take-up rate is roughly one-third of those given the choice in those defined benefit plans as well as in defined contribution plans. So what the, this new option basically does is it provides a cost-effective way for that roughly a third of participants who, given an open choice, would prefer a life income stream to get that life income stream directly out of the defined contribution plan at a, a much lower cost than if they mm -hmm. were having to go buy it in the individual market. Mm -hmm. um, and with United Technologies uh, strategy, uh, talk a little bit about how um, things work in their plan mid-career because they, they phase uh, assets into the uh, income uh, product uh, about the age of 48. Well, what they're really looking at is one of the principal challenges in any of these programs, which is what individuals' job tenure is and age. Mm -hmm. And what they've acknowledged is that essentially, up until individuals move into their late 40s, early 50s, they anticipate moving jobs frequently, and statistically, they do change jobs frequently. The result is that they do not tend to opt for life income options. So what United Technology has done is they've, they've essentially matched the design to data that's available on job tenure and data that's available on individual choice to match up all of those preferences. Mm -hmm. And right now we're in a low interest rate environment and variable annuities haven't been doing as well as they have done in the past. So, um, you know, how is, how is that addressed? I think that that is something that will adjust over time because mm -hmm. essentially the annuity pricing will change as interest rates change. Mm -hmm. And that's true in any aspect of annuity provision. Okay. And, and one of the things about annuities in general that, you know, they've been criticized uh, is that sometimes they're somewhat complex um, and, you know, people have a hard enough time trying to figure out what fees they're paying in their 401k. Uh, do you see that these products becoming a little bit more transparent? Well, I think that the, the fee issue on annuities is somewhat of a misnomer. Mm -hmm. Is The bottom line is one principally needs to pay attention to the security and ratings of the entity that or the insurer, whomever, that is standing behind the annuity. That's the most important thing. Can mm -hmm. you depend on them being there? Then the second issue is for the amount of money, cash, that is in the account, what is the annuity that I will be paid for it? And in essence, because of the complexities of annuity pricing, as you point out, is 
is it's not really as much as what fee is I'm paying as if I can get three different possible annuities, which mm-hmm. one gives me the best deal in the benefit paid. Mm-hmm. And in that sense, it's a simple equation, and individuals can make that judgment fairly quickly. But I, but I underline it's the underlying security and rating of the issuer of the annuity that is very important in mm-hmm. terms of individual choice. Well, now we're, you know, we're beginning to address the income and the asset, uh, you know, risk issues here. Still the problem that some have said here in closing, you know, is that we're in in a retirement crisis here in the U.S. uh, caused by a number of factors, living longer, longer lifespans. But people uh, inherently don't, on their own, tend to save enough or put enough into the 401k. Do you see things, um, you know, addressing that problem coming our way soon? Well, actually, again, so much of this depends on the tenure of individuals. Mm -hmm. We're actually finding that if one compares defined contribution plans with the traditional defined benefit plans, the account balances being built up by large long-tenure employees are actually higher Mm -hmm. than what they would have achieved through a defined benefit plan. And many millions of people have gotten small benefits from defined benefit plans because of very short job tenure. So the individual averages that people cite, that 50% of those with a 401k plan have less than $10,000, well, 50% of those with a defined benefit had about the same amount of money. Right. And in the other hand, if you say, well, the average account balance in a K plan is $80,000, Well, that adds together people, all those people with one year of tenure who have next to no money with the long tenure. The more meaningful reference point is if you look at these participants who have 30 or more years of tenure and who are over age 60, those account balances on average are closer now to $300,000. And relative to what they would have had in a defined benefit plan, it's pretty consistent. It's actually a little better than the defined benefit plan. Uh, My guest has been Dallas Salisbury. He is president of the Employee Benefit Research Institute in Washington, D.C. Again, Dallas, uh, thanks for sharing your time with us today. Wonderful to be with you. And you're watching Annuity News Now.